Let us pray. Almighty God, whose glory is in all the world, we thank you for the beauty and joy of this day. It is by your unsearchable wisdom and by your everlasting love that you have brought us over many years and in many and diverse ways to be together this afternoon. We ask that you be present with us all in whatsoever places we are now assembled. And thus assembled, we ask your blessing upon the students whom we particularly desire to honor today, and upon their families and friends, and upon all the members of this college. In your name we pray. Amen. Welcome, everyone, as we celebrate the men of the class of 2020 in our first ever virtual commencement at Wabash College. None of us could have imagined this event when we gathered in this sacred space four years ago. In case you might have only a fuzzy recollection of that warm August day, I'll remind you that I offered you my very best advice the four gets not to forget. As a reminder, they spell the word wish. On that day, when you sat high in the balcony and shook hands with your classmates, you accepted my wish for you to get to work so that everything you get in life, you earn. Get involved. You will not enjoy in college by yourself. Get to sleep. Little good happens at night, everyone. It was late at night is the first line of every sad story of remorse that makes it to the dean of students' office. And the fourth one, the H, get help. It's the toughest one because you have to ask for help when you need it. And trust me, you will always need it. Indeed, you did get to work and you did get involved. I'm not sure how much sleep you got, but you knew there was always help when you needed it. And in this space, surrounded by your brothers, you thrived. By your presence, actions, and contributions, you have left this college better than you have found it. You, in turn, have emerged stronger for your perseverance, resilience, and courage. You have embodied the highest ideals of the gentleman's rule, and we are very proud of you. Men of the class of 2020, you know that you are equipped for lives of purpose and meaning. You leave your alma mater prepared to flourish and to be the men your liberal arts college education has informed you to be. At this time, it is my great honor for me to introduce our virtual commencement speaker, Arthur Allen Akiwa. Artie is a biology major and chemistry German minor here at Wabash. He was born and raised in the heart of the region, Crown Point, Indiana. His parents, Annie and Art, are two of his greatest role models, and he is extremely grateful for their never-ending love and support. Due to his physical size and age in relation to his father, Artie is commonly referred to as Little Art. But I can assure you that it has never hindered his self-confidence. Artie has served as a captain of the football team, president of the Sigma Chi fraternity, and had a leading role in our production of Biloxi Blues. He is also a global health initiative fellow and a senior fellow in the Wabash Democracy and Public Discourse Initiative. Artie will attend the Marin University College of Osteopathic Medicine this upcoming fall. Please welcome Artie Akiwa.
Thank you, President Hess. Um, but before I begin my speech, I would just like to say um, just a big thank you to everybody who's gotten me here today. I think all the seniors can really attest that we have a very special support network in uh, the Wabash family that we now belong to. Um, I personally could not have done it uh, without the help of many faculty, staff, um, as well as uh, the dream team. And if you're a part of that dream team, you know who you are. So, good afternoon, Wabash. And class of 2020, congratulations. We finally made it. I understand this is not exactly what we thought our commencement would look like, but honestly, there are a lot of things within our last four years we could have never expected, such as Donald and Hillary almost stealing the Monon Bell, Professor David Blix's 18th birthday, or that beloved period that now sits after our W. Even songs we used to enjoy now just bring us a sense of anxiety, such as Van Halen's Get Me a Doctor, Maroon 5's It's Getting Harder to Breathe, or Lil Wayne's lyric in a Millie, I'm ill. Yet here we are in 2020, together celebrating four years of shared memories while also preparing for a lifetime of many more. And to be honest, despite not being able to finish out my senior year here on Wabash's campus, I'm grateful. Grateful for a college, its alumni, and its workers that have seen more in me than I ever have in myself. Grateful for the numerous friends I have made throughout my journey who have pushed, supported, and encouraged me to become the best version of myself I could be. Grateful for every single one of you who has demonstrated resilience and dedication in tuning in here today. Like many of you graduates, before I began my Wabash journey, I had no idea what the next four years had in store for me. But in a way, I didn't care. Because what I did know was that at the end of those four years, I would be a Wabash man. And that was a distinction worth pursuing. Now, what exactly does that mean, to become a Wabash man? Well, rather than trying to tell you, I figured I might as well just show you. If you want to know what a Wabash man looks like, look at Eli Shadwick, a senior who had the courage to give an emotional chapel talk about what it's like being a black man in today's society. Look at Abe Kiesel or Aaron Webb, who selflessly gave up their summers to give children with debilitating health conditions a chance to feel normal. Or Joey Ballard, who has spent countless hours translating for Spanish-speaking patients at a local medical clinic. Look at David Riggs, Gabriel Anguiano, or Matt Feitz, who are all recipients of the Orr Fellowship, which they will use to begin their entrepreneurial careers. Look at seniors Hunter Jones and Alex Pittsford, flexing on everyone by getting distinction in not just one, but both of their academic majors. These are only a select few of the 177 graduating seniors today that each have a laundry list of accolades and experiences that culminate into 177 unique stories that Wabash has never seen before. But despite all of our differences, there are some things we do have in common. We all purposely chose an all-male school, a college in the middle of nowhere with class sizes so small, your professor would not only notice your absence, but give you crap about it the next time you showed up to class. We chose a school that would challenge us, push us in ways we cannot expect, but why? Well, I would argue it's because we all have an innate desire to better ourselves. We expect more out of Wabash men than we do of others. We have a shared understanding that nothing worthwhile comes easy. And yet, here we are, in the midst of a pandemic, helpless to an invisible pathogen that has not only taken the lives of our loved ones, but our freedom too. We find ourselves entering a workforce within a nation crippled with unemployment and slowly but surely losing faith and patience in its leaders. But I don't believe I need to continue describing how much our world is hurting right now. Because honestly, all of this negativity isn't going to help anyone. So to keep this speech from becoming another news broadcast, I figured I would reflect on some of our past experiences and suggest why controlling your attitude, recognizing others, and leading by example can be ways to remain resilient while enduring moments of crisis. So first, don't control your future, control your attitude. I recently saw a quote that said, embrace uncertainty. 
Some of the most beautiful chapters in our lives won't have a title until much later. I believe we have all currently found ourselves in the throes of uncertainty, asking, when will the vaccine come? When can we go back to work? Will life ever go back to normal again? We have become obsessed with controlling our futures rather than focusing on the present. And it's completely understandable, given how unprecedented our, certain, our current situation is. But if you think about it, before any of us had known COVID-19, we had our own fair share of unprecedented challenges. For example, the second leading cause of death for the generation of today's graduating class is suicide, a tale we personally know too well. And when confronted with this previously unprecedented epidemic, initially in 2016 after Austin Weirich passed, and again in 2018 after Evan Hansen's death, we found ways to make life more bearable. And we did this by understanding that if nothing good lasts forever, then nothing bad does either. So rather than sulking in our sorrows, we redefined mental health on our campus by discussing it during lunch seminars and chapel talks, by creating mental health chairs in our own living units, and by being more present in each other's lives. During our moments of crisis, we found strength and optimism in each other when there was none to be found in ourselves. We took the initiative to label, label our moments of crisis moments of resilience instead. And just as we titled those experiences, we will do the same to the current chapter we are facing today, as well as the many unprecedented challenges to come. Second, be the one who recognizes others, not the one who begs for recognition. But before I get into this one, we must acknowledge that recognition, recognition comes in many different shapes and forms, such as an apology, a thank you, a good job, or an especially an I'm here for you. Wabash has proven to be really good at this. We have routinized the recognition of other Wabash men through tradition on campus, from the ringing in ceremony to senior commencement, from chapel talks about race and mental health to candlelight vigils for our fallen brothers. <laughs> I mean, what the hell? The only day we decide to cancel classes is for the celebration of student research, which for those of you who don't know, is a made-up holiday dedicated to celebrating the accomplishments of Wabash students. <laughs> but it is through this recognition of others that we have inadvertently opened the door for intimacy and trust, resulting in a tightly knit brotherhood where everyone feels appreciated. But we must not be content with this. We must take it upon ourselves to help others recognize the community that is around them so that they may begin to benefit from it like we do. I don't think there's any better example of this than my time spent working with WDPD. My work has proven to me that even mere Wabash undergraduates are capable of helping others address issues like generational poverty, racism, or immigration. But we don't create change by pretending to be experts. We create change by helping members of other communities recognize that they have everything they need in each other to overcome their immense challenges. All they have to do is be willing to work together. And lastly, lead by example. As we all know, Wabash is chock full of unique traditions, but no other tradition speaks to Wabash's goal in creating leaders, like having their own students speak at their commencement. Today is a moment of realization for each and every one of us that it is our time to lead. It's Wabash's way of saying we have accrued the wisdom and confidence from our past experiences to truly make a difference. We have embraced uncertainty, controlled our attitudes, and created a powerful sense of community by recognizing each other. Now it is our time to embody these lessons and demonstrate their efficacy to others through leading by example. 50 years ago, during his own commencement speech, William Plaker quoted Albert Camus's novel, The Plague, when considering 1970 a time of pestilence, but not because the U.S. was combating an infectious disease, because it was a country at war with itself. I believe that we too have found ourselves in times of pestilence, for we have been combating political polarization, mental instability, 
and environmental devastation well before any stay-at-home orders were issued. And now we have a pandemic. By no means am I saying that we have solved these wicked problems. But what I am saying is that we have accepted that these issues are and will continue to be present in our lives. But rather than submitting to their horrifying complexity, we can make living in this ugly reality more bearable. And maybe if we continue to embrace uncertainty, control our attitude, recognize others, or even lead by example, we might be able to make living in these times of pestilence easier for everyone, but only if we do it the Wabash way. Thank you. Good afternoon. In 1953, the Senior Council, the student government of its time, established a ward to be given each spring to the senior student who, during his time at Wabash, quote, truly exemplifies the Wabash spirit. He should be the type of man that Wabash can proudly call her own. The Council named this honor the Frank H. Sparks Award after the then president of the college and determined that the award would be given on the basis of attitude, activities, scholarship, leadership, athletics, and overall personal growth and achievement. Quite simply, the student is to have helped make Wabash a better college. The selection of the recipient, made jointly by the Dean of Students and the Dean of the College, was a most difficult one this year. Members of the class of 2020, please join me in congratulating your class's Frank H. Sparks Award recipient, Hunter Jones. The John Maurice Butler Prize was established in 1923 by Mrs. Alpheus Henry Snow in memory of her brother, a graduate of the class of 1887. They were the children of John M. Butler, who as a college trustee from 1871 to 1895, developed the administrative structure and governance of Wabash College that we recognize today. Gronert and Osborne in Wabash College the first hundred years wrote, quote, there is no family in the history of the college whose name would attach more appropriately to a prize given for the combination of high character and great ability. Nominations are solicited from the faculty who vote on the winner at the conclusion of the academic year. This year we had very strong nominations. Gentlemen, you are certainly members of an exceptional class. On Friday morning at a special meeting of the faculty, the faculty chose the recipient of the 2020 John Maurice Butler Prize, Nathan Gray. Mr. President. Madam Secretary. Mr. President, it is my great honor to present to you the Wabash College Class of 2020 so that you may confer upon them the in-course degree of Bachelor of Arts. Thank you. Gentlemen of the Wabash Class of 2020, you have fulfilled the requirements of graduation from this college. You have overcome obstacles and persevered in difficult times to even include pandemic. You have made all of us who have taught, mentored, and guided you very proud of what you have, what you have accomplished in our classroom and labs, in athletic competition, and in your creative and scholarly pursuits here on campus and around the world. Therefore, by the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of Wabash College and delegated to that board by the great state of Indiana, I do hereby confer upon you 
the Bachelor of Arts degree with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities thereunto appertaining. At this time, Associate Dean of the College and Registrar John Jump will read the name of each graduate of our great college. It is my honor to present to you the Wabash College Class of 2020. Mohammed Diam Adnan. Amos Bailey Allen. Eric David Anderson. James Daniel Andre, magna cum laude. Gabriel Aguiano. Michael Joseph Armbruster, Jr. Maxwell Logan Atkins, magna cum laude. Isaac D. Evant. Hunter Andrew Bale. Joseph Harrison Ballard, summa cum laude. Miles Anthony Barilla. Cum laude. Christopher Joseph Barker. Ryan Michael Barr. Trey Dawson Barton. Hunter B. Bates. Mitchell Allen Beard. Jared Stephen Bertram. Nathan Eric Biggs. Jackson Scott Blevins. Lamar Michael Bodwin. James Joseph Bovis. Aaron James Boyd. Colin Andrew Brennan. Charles Wesley Brewer. Quan Hong Chow. James Gabriel Shadid. Jacob Lee Chrisman, magna cum laude. Cameron David Coates. Chase Christopher Cochran, cum laude. Jonathan Cole Copsey. Benjamin Allen Cox, magna cum laude. Austin Samuel Coy. Vincent Paul D'Angelo. Jacob L. Dean. Andrew B. Denning. Owen David Doster. Alex Evan Eberhard. Titus Daniel Edwards. Walid Mohammed El Rafai, cum laude. Arthur Allen Akiwa II. Magna cum laude. John Matthew Fight. Timothy Lavon Fields, Jr. Dakota Towner Floyd. Evan George Foley. Nicholas James Fox, magna cum laude. Jeremy Elliot Frazier. Eric Robert Fritchley. Cruz Manuel Garcia, cum laude. Colton Allen Garland. Michael Lucian Garrett III. Christian McKinley Gosser. 
Nathan William Gray, summa cum laude. Benjamin Allen Grubbs, magna cum laude. Nicholas George Grujanic. Harrison James Hallstrom. William Xavier Honfelter III. Logan Lee Hawk. Brock Edward Heffron. Rhett Allen Helt. Jarrett Lee Hendricks. Vivan George Lawrence Hentz. Samuel Locke Henthorne, summa cum laude. Atanasio Adrian Hernandez Munoz. Andrew Ethan Heron, cum laude. Samuel William Hippel. Myron Leonardo Howard. Nathaniel Thomas Hubert, summa cum laude. Tuck Bao Hyun, magna cum laude. Chandler Evan Jacks. Anthony Jonas Johnson. Hunter J. Jones, summa cum laude. Rashawn James Evan Jones. Ethan Robert Kanzler. Joseph John Karcheski, cum laude. Thomas Andrew Beckel Kenny. Jacob Lewis Kessler. Abraham Joseph Kiesel, summa cum laude. Benjamin James Kiesel, magna cum laude. Zachary D. Kintz. John Carlos Kurtz, magna cum laude. Sopera Coy, magna cum laude. Ryan James Krug. Davis Blake Lamb, cum laude. Brian James Lobby. Maxwell Gabriel Lawson. Marlon Germain Lewis, Jr. Benjamin Haoshang Lang. Ian Michael Little. Renzo Layug Loyola. Devin Rayburn Lucky. Andrew Robert Lukens. Theodore Michael Lupinski, magna cum laude. Jacob Anthony Macaluso. Rajeno Jonathan Malone. Blake J. Marquette. Alexander Joseph Marr, cum laude. Patrick Ryan Marsh. Ivan Alberto Martinez, magna cum laude. Patrick Brault McCauley. Daniel Fendrick McCarthy IV. Brendan Anthony McCoy. Ryan Alexander McDaniel. Corey Tyler McLaughlin. Zachary Michael McMahon. Ethan Scott McNaughton. Isaiah Roland Mears. Teague Joseph Michael Myers. Nathan Carter Melkai.
Anthony Reyes Mendez. Zhi Miao, cum laude. Zachary James Moffat. Caleb A. Mooney. Matthew M. Mozak, cum laude. Benjamin Franklin Mossany, magna cum laude. Ethan Teague Asher Mott. Manzil Mudbare. Eric Thomas Murphy, summa cum laude. Muhammad Asher Nadim. Skylar Reese Nerig. Parker Andrew Knoll, magna cum laude. Balin Kerr Orcutt, magna cum laude. David Ortega. Zachary George Ostrowski, cum laude. Keith Anthony Owen, cum laude. Colton Blake Page. Connor Allen Phelps. Darian Tate Phillips, cum laude. Alexander Michael Pittsford, summa cum laude. Luke Paul Podgorny. William Michael Polan. Cordell Austin Prescott. Calvin Jeffrey Ramsey. Christian E. Redmond, cum laude. Stephen Todd Rydell. Michael Joseph Rising. James Austin Ridley. David W. Riggs, magna cum laude. Jacob Andrew Riley. Jesus Alejandro Rodriguez. Austin Michael Rudisil, magna cum laude. Franklin Graves Russell. Simran Singh Sandhu, cum laude. Bennett Alexander Sayre, magna cum laude. Robert Edward Scheel. Darden H. Scherg. Elijah Stephen Shadwick. Abdurahim Cameron Sharani. Spencer Thomas Shank. Ethan Charles Schultz. Aaron Robert Sikorsky, cum laude. Sheldon Lee Slusser. Jonathan Tyler Stevens. Samuel David Stevenson, magna cum laude. Jared Michael Strell. Kyle Reese Stroh. Drew Allen Stoltz. Ballard Trent Souter. Arlen Razel Telefero. Michael Alexander Tanchevsky, magna cum laude. Brayton Dallas Taylor. William Clark Tinder. Mason Rourke Swank Toller, summa cum laude. Marcus Alec Torres. Pierce Davis Van Houten. Abdullah Wagay. 
John Robert Wagner. John Henry Wallace. Henry Joseph Wannemuller. Kyle D. Warbenton, cum laude. Nicholas James Weaver, cum laude. Aaron Jameson Webb, summa cum laude. Andrew Tyler Wyland. James Anthony Williams, Jr. Austin Bradley Yeomans, magna cum laude. Nathan Raphael Young, cum laude. Ifrat Zaman. Harold A. Zucca III. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven. We are now in the season of spring, a time to celebrate renewal and the future. This is a season that breathes new life into our souls, and we have perhaps never needed spring more than we do this year. As these days become longer, we look to the class of 2020 with excitement and possibility for what you will accomplish in the years to come. The timing of commencement sidesteps the inconvenient truth that we are marrying the ending of one aspect of your life with the very beginning of a new one. This blending of the new and the old defines your Wabash journey from ringing in to ringing out. Trust me, I know just how you feel. Be assured, gentlemen, that your Wabash education has provided you with the simple gifts you need to find your way, to make good and to do good, to find meaning and purpose in life and to celebrate it, not just to be men, but to be good men, very good men. We gave you the tools of a lifelong education to think critically, to read and write clearly, to solve and reflect, to immerse yourselves in your surroundings and your inner lives, and to help you identify your authentic selves. And this semester, we gave you a double dose of how to deal with obstacles. We gave you the keen eye of a Wabash education so that you might see diverse points of view and be challenged by them. But before you leave, leave us for new beginnings, I'd like to give you a little bit more advice. It's called the four gives not to forget. The first piece is to give thanks. You know, okay, everybody up off the couch now, uh, you know, those of you back uh, at home. You have mothers and fathers, brothers and sisters, spouses, partners, and friends who are all celebrating you at this very moment. Don't forget throughout your life to celebrate them and give thanks for those around you. The second is to give back. Our day of giving at Wabash took place earlier this week, and the focus of our celebration was how to be together even though we were apart as one Wabash together. We are capable of so much when we blur our differences and bond together. This is evident when a graduate from the class of 1955 makes an e-gift on the day of giving in response to a challenge put up by the current students. It is also an illustration how one generation passes the torch to the next one. But here's the secret. 
Life is not just about one day of giving. It's about every day of giving. So give back every day. The third give is to give it forward. Be generous to those around you and bring them into your circle. Expand, expand your notion of self-interest. Self-interest need not be limited to the self. Be inclusive and you will see your lives flourish in ways you could never imagine possible. The final give is to give notice. Wabash men, you have arrived. You are smart, directed, passionate, and compassionate. You have swagger. Don't lose it. Don't ever lose it. Wabash always fights will be your mantra for life. Be bold. Gentlemen, in the class of 2020, whether you are participating in this commencement from Vigo County, Indiana, or Vietnam, please stand and join me in one of this college's greatest traditions. Men, in the class of 2020, it has been my sincere honor to share these last four years with you, to witness your joys and sorrows, hopes and dreams, victories and defeats, and most important, your shared lives with one another. Know that we recognize and understand your disappointment and frustration with your post-spring break virtual semester and even your virtual graduation. Know that we will have an in-person ceremony for you where you can walk under the arch and sing Dear Old Wabash together once more. We've seen the surveys. You continue to love and recognize the dedication of our great staff and faculty, teacher, scholars. But we know something's been missing for you, and here's why. Because we know that ultimately, the greatest education and the greatest gift we gave you at this college was each other. Be strong and seek strength from each other, not just now, but for the rest of your lives. Remember, each of us is little. It's only together that we are giants. You have been and will continue to be each other's epistles in a place, Wabash College, that will forever and always be your home. Now, gentlemen of Wabash, take pride in your accomplishments and go forth into this world as good, very good Wabash men. I will try to do that too. Let us pray. Most gracious and loving God, we thank you for the gift of this college and for the irreplaceable legacy of those who have gone before us. We now ask that you, who watches over the sons of this college and sets them in the courses of their lives, bestow upon them wisdom and strength vision and joy, courage and hope. We pray that we all may be worthy heirs of this legacy for this generation and for those to come. And as we go forth from here, we also ask that you help us to tell the story of this great good place so that knowledge and service may increase among us and all our lives be thereby enriched. In your name we pray, amen. And now, 
please join the alumni from the class of 2020 as they sing Old Wabash. Da, 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 From the hills of Maine to the western plain or where the cotton is blowing. From gloomy shade of the northern pine and the light of the southern sea. There's a name held dear in a color we cheer wherever we find it glowing. And the tears will rise so long the eyes as it flows on the evening breeze. When the day is done and the western sun is painting and flashing glory. Across the skies with gorgeous eyes, the color we love so well. We love to sit as the shadows flit and praise it in song and story. Love the sun's light as a good Wabajo. Our prayers are always thine, our voices and hearts combine. To sing thy praise when future days shall bring thy name before us. When college days are past, as long as life shall last, the greatest joy will be to shout the chorus. The classic calls, the scar the flag shall proudly flash. Let's go, Bash! Long in our hearts will bear the sweetest memories of thee. Long shall we sing thy praises, old Wabash. Second verse. And loud and long shall come the song to the halo ring. To spread the fame of her honor name wherever the breezes blow. Till sweet and clear the world shall hear the sons of Wabash singing. Flying free the world shall see your scarlet banner go. The honors won by each loyal son and highest rank shall instate her. Forevermore as a daisy you are, the deeds be noble and grand. Then once again you Wabash men, three cheers for all my mater. Whether we fall revered by all be she unequal stand. Prayers are always thine, our voices and hearts combine. To sing the praise for future days shall bring thy name before us. When college days are past, as long as life shall last, our greatest joy will be to shout the chorus. Here, oh, God,